and then we put it in. Well, good evening everybody and uh, welcome uh, to the Dante Alighieri Society's cultural evening this evening. Um, thank you very much for uh, taking the time and making the effort to, to be here tonight. We've had a little bit of a tricky business in Western Australia over the past few uh, months. And uh, every now and again, I think um, in this post-COVID world, I suspect we'll be um, confronting these sorts of uh, situations from time to time. But um, I'm glad that you're all here. And uh, um, I'd like to make a formal introduction of my very good friend, Gabriele Campani. I, um, I came to know Gabriele in, I think it was 2017, not long after, um, he and uh, his partner Margarita had moved to Perth, Western Australia from New Zealand. And they'd spent a little bit of time in New Zealand from about 2009, if my memory serves me well. And um, his journey from Italy to New Zealand uh, began from his um, birthplace in Modena, Italy. And uh, Gabriele has got an interesting background. Um, he uh, graduated with a master's in economics and taught for a little while in that subject. But um, he then went on to do something which perhaps some of us dream of doing and not necessarily all of us actually achieve, which is to follow a dream or a passion. And Gabriele's passion, as you will um, uh, no doubt hear this evening, is music. And um, this is uh, one of the things that uh, I had in common with Gabriele, and uh, that's how uh, he and I became good friends. Um, he commenced uh, playing music in the 80s and then went and got qualifications in music. He has um, qualifications in guitar and harmony, arrangement and orchestration. And he's been performing since the 80s and he's performed in Italy, in Switzerland, in Canada, in America, in New Zealand and in Western Australia. So he's had over 30 years of experience um, and what uh, I find um, attractive about um, his approach is that uh, as most musicians are, they are dedicated, they are passionate um, and they're disciplined. And I think tonight we're going to see a little bit about a little bit of all of that as he takes us through this uh, journey. And I think you'll find some interesting facts that he's dug up about the connection between jazz and uh, the Italian contribution to jazz. So please uh, join me in welcoming Gabriel. Okay. Um, first, just like thank you for being here. And um, uh, this cultural event uh, is about jazz guitar. Uh, uh, first, I want to thank you for being here. Thanks to John for the kind words and the nice presentation. Uh, jazz guitar, a long lasting love affair with Italy. Uh, we, we receive from the point of view of the Italians the contribution that they did as and from the point of view of, of the artistry as from the point of view of the Lutheran. Um, but the first question just like is what is jazz? How can we define jazz? And it's interesting that um, the, the last New York Jazz Festival uh, before the COVID-19 shut down uh, the underlying was uh, jazz is everything is not jazz, and it's interesting as uh, it's just like uh, jazz is a sort of what can I say? It's a big thing where many styles uh, in in the ears where you know uh, built this sort of big house that has become jazz. So we can't define jazz as one style. Uh, and, and, and this is, is interesting, and it's, I think it's important to understand 
as as I personally don't like to label music, you know, and the label are only useful for putting the vinyl, you know, in order. But just like just like that, it's when you have some musicians, you can't really know where where to locate them, and it's better. And it's better as music is something. It's just like the art of music. Uh, to define jazz, just we start to see how jazz was born. Jazz was born in New Orleans. Uh, Franco D'Andrea is a piano player, a jazz piano player. I have the pleasure of opening one concert for him in more or less 20 years ago. Anyway, he said that uh, jazz is African European music born in America. I mean, I think it's exactly like that. Yeah, why? This is one of the first, really first photos of jazz musicians. They are in pose, of course. And, and uh, why we say European African music? And New Orleans was uh, first a Spanish colony, then it was a French colony, and the name New Orleans. Uh, uh, it comes from Nouvelle Orleans, the New Orleans, and then arrived the British, and, and this, and of course, it was the place, one of the locations, one of the ports, where the famous uh, slave trade. They arrived the boats from Africa, and, and the slaves had to dance to show that they were healthy in what it was called Congo Square. With the end of slavery, of course, there was this melting pot of different cultures. Uh, and, and, and this was the point where, you know, it, the, the thing starts going on and it starts working. And this is one of the really first uh, photos of a, of a jazz band, uh, a Creole band. Uh, there was a uh, First, uh, we don't have uh, recordings, uh, music scores of that period, as most of these musicians were not educated musicians. The only one were the piano player. That's why we have music from uh, Rick Time, Scott Joplin, just like the entertainer, uh, Maple Lee Frag, all this kind. We have from the from uh, recordings from them, uh, not recordings, just like music scores from them, as they were educated musicians. But a great majority of them couldn't write music. So we don't, have, we don't know how, we, how they sound. But we know from this space that there was no guitar, as we talked about the guitar. There were banjos. The, re the reason is very simple. Guitar is not loud enough to be listened when you have a trumpet, a trombone, drums. It was not loud enough. This is one of the first photos where there is a guitar. You see, this is a big guy, probably hit the strings quite, you know, strong. And, and, and uh, this was the band of Buddy Bolden. We have no recording. Buddy Bolden was the trumpet player, this one. Yeah. And we have no recording of, 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 of the band. And Buddy Bolin was put in a mental hospital two years after this picture. This picture is 1905. And never came out from there. Uh, to, to wait, uh, we have to wait uh, until 1917 to have the first recording in jazz. The original Dixieland jazz band. Jazz is written with the double S. Uh, as uh, I tried to see when I play, when I write play, okay, so you can it now, sorry about that, did it well with music, okay, I put off, so I want to see if I can show you the complete screen and then come back, okay, I can, I can do it, um, this guy was Dominique Nick Barocca, he was the band leader, the trumpet player, <coughs> Uh, Dominique Nick La Rocca, his name was Domenico La Rocca, and was born in New Orleans. He was the son of Sicilian immigrants. Uh, uh, um, 
he recorded, as you see, the, the, the very first jazz tune. Uh, he composed Tiger Ray, but the first tune was Livery Stable Blues in 1970. The first recording was done by that band. And we see another one, another piece of the same year, 1917. This one. You see, uh, uh, this guy, i show you better in that way, Let's see if it works. Okay, this guy here, with the, with the saxophone and the clarinet, was Armand John, uh, was um, Lorenz Thiel, the Armand John Piron, New Orleans Orchestra. And, and he was a, a, a it was a saxophone and clarinet. All this family, his dad was a clarinet and his uncle. And, and when I tell you something, it uh, comes from uh, Wikipedia or the British Encyclopedia or the Library of Congress, so it's not my opinion, it's what they say. And, and what they say is that He says, uh, their method of playing the instrument was seminal in the development of the jazz solo. The three tiers helped bring classical music theory to ragtime music and jazz musician of New Orleans. So the contribution of, the, uh, of that guy in his family was quite remarkable. And if you see, no guitar. Guitar was not loud enough, as we said. The first one was this guy, Nick Lucas. But his, it was not his name. His name was Nicola Lucinese. Uh, and, and he was born in the Italian family in New York, New Jersey. And most of them comes from New Jersey. And, and he was the first jazz guitarist to record as soloist in 1922. And now we listen. What is it? Uh, you will you will see. Uh, now I show you uh, the, uh, the two original sides picking the guitar and teasing the frets. These are the the, the titles of the tunes. Um, and what they say that with these sides, Nick Lucas cut a path for generations of guitarists to come. These were the first solo jazz guitar instrumentals recorded. So it's, it's pretty remarkable. Now we see this guy, and we listen to him. Um, consider that uh, the style of singing is quite old, old time, just like an Italian romanza. But the, 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 if, you, if you listen more the guitar than the vocals, uh, it's really quite modern, as in the chords, as in the arpeggios. Not modern, but anyway, it is not the classical kind of thing. I will see. I hope it works. If it doesn't, I come back to the. No, it doesn't. So I, I really like that. You should connect <laughs> and play the whole thing. It works. My dreamy guitar seems to sing every time I touch the string of summer night and moonbeams. Wherever you are, how I wish you would hear that song it sings, a song that will What 
my old guitar is playing. And you hear it humming sweet and low. Every note it sings is true. For it says I love you. That's the only song I know. Guitar player that is considered really a jazz guitar player was Eddie Lang. Eddie Lang, his name was Salvatore Massaro, mm. and, and he was a son of an Italian uh, instrument maker. Uh, and, and during the 20s, gave the guitar a prominence it previously lacked as a solo instrument, as part of the band, or orchestra, and as a complement. Consider that, you see, the instrument is still an acoustic guitar. We will see the difference soon. And it is the same guitar that the four singers used and blues singers uh, used. And then there will be something different and we will, we will know the reason soon. Uh, another thing it's interesting, when you listen to this style, is so similar to what has been called gypsy jazz. The reality is that it was not um, something related to the gypsy. It was called gypsy jazz, the swing, as it was related to, to, to you know, John Reiner and, what, and, and, and the, his legacy. But the reality is that it was a style that was common to the Yiddish music, to music also in the Balkany. If you listen to Bela Bartok or the Hungarian folkloric music, there are a lot of elements of what it has been called gypsy jazz. So the roots of swing are very European. Uh, the, the real huge importance that the African, the, the black culture, the African culture, Wrote was mostly the fact that they have pentatonic instruments and they used to have a minor pentatonic over a major chords. So they used minor melodies over major chords. We would say the, so the famous blue notes, the, the minor third, minor flat five, and flat seven. And what we see by the, the roots of, of swing were mostly uh, European. And, and um, the, the first thing I want to show you at an audio is Eddie Lang and Giovenuti. Giuseppe Giovenuti uh, was uh, another, uh, he is uh, another Italian origin guy. He was considered the father of jazz violin. He pioneered the use of string instruments in jazz along with the guitarist Eddie Lang, a friend since child. Uh, they, they became very famous. We, we have, I found this interesting video. I have there are a lot of slides of that time. Uh, I think it's, it's quite interesting. Thank you. 
He used this guitar, Eddie Lang, Gibson M5. This one. You see that it's different from the guitar that Nick Lucas, this uh, was a Gibson 1927, Nick Lucas model. Why I'm talking about that? As, uh, as I talk about the, the, the contribution of the Italians, the development of jazz, uh, I said also that the development of the jazz uh, or, or the guitar instrument. And uh, the, the Italians didn't have a long tradition in, in guitars. It was mostly Spanish than Italian. But they have a, a tradition in violins and mandolins. And an arch top is basically quite similar to a mandolin to a violin. Uh, the, uh, the reason I show you the reason of the difference is inside. The, the, this, is, this is the soundboard, the internal part of the soundboard. The, uh, these are called bracing. The reason of the bracing is that without them, the guitar collapses for the pressure of the strings. So there are sticks. Of, of, of hard wood that are glued to the to the soundboard to make it resistant. Uh, this is the the it's called X bracing. It's typical of a classical acoustic guitar. But if you see a mandolin as a vertical bracing, a violin as uh, you see that is um, is uh, how can I say uh, is and uh, si dice scavato? Chisel? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. oh okay. No. Chisel. Uh, carved. Oh. Sorry, I, I forgot the term. It's end carved. And in this case, the bracing, it's, uh, as it, it was a, a big block of, of, a thick block of wood, car and car, so you need to be very good, otherwise you make an old, and it's, you have to throw everything away. Uh, but, but the difference is, and you see, this is an arch top guitar, and you see the internal part, but you have the vertical bracing. This made a difference as allowed to the, to the youthers, Italian youthers, to start working to these models. In, uh, they, they have experience in violins and they have experience in, in mandolins. There was the Neapolitan tradition of mandolins. And, and, and they became very good doing these instruments. The, the reason why it was chosen for jazz, it's, uh, it's in two main reasons. One is the attack. The attack of a note of an arch top guitar is very loud, but the decay, the decay of the sound is quick. And it was exactly what you need uh, when you do a lot of notes or when you're strong. You don't want a, a, that re guitar, the guitar resonate too long. Second reason was the frequencies. When you play in a band, you, you need to, to stay in a range uh, and, and avoid to make a collision with other instruments. And the, the range of the arch top was mid-high range. It was perfect. For, for a band. And, and in this other s slide, we see one of the Luther, it was John D'Angelico. John D'Angelico, 1932, he started producing these beautiful guitars. And, and, and Jimmy D'Aquisto was one of the students, and many, many others kept on with this tradition. Uh, and Gibson was the first one to produce this. But there were many Italian Luthers that start producing this guitar. Now I'll show you some of them produced now by the sons or the grandsons of the first youthers, Robert Benedetto, James D'Aquisto, John Muscarino, Mark Ampelone, John Montalone. They are guitars that cost a lot of money. As you can imagine, they are all the, these kind of guitars are handmade and they are and the top. The reason is that doing the top in that way uh, it needs a lot of experience and of course it costs a lot. Uh, and, and this was quite remarkable. But the reason uh, why at a certain time things need to change was the volume. As the volume anyway was not loud enough to play single strings. 
guitar and piano are the two harmonic instruments. They can play more notes contemporary. The trumpet no, as that saxophone no, plays one note after the other, just like the vocals. But uh, until the instrument was strum, strumming loud, it could stay. But as soon as uh, you should you want to part to move to single notes, no volume enough to stand in a band. And, and we see around uh, this is always Freddie Green. Freddie Green was a master of, of rhythm guitar. You see, his guitar was not amplified. It was not amplification. And it was for 50 years the rhythm machine of Count Basie. But to move from that, you need the amplification. You need a way of making the guitar louder. And this was the guy, Charlie Christian, that made the solo guitar, started the idea of the solo guitar as an instrument that plays single notes. And that was his instrument, the Gibson ES. 150 and the amplifier, tube amplifier, of course, not digital. Uh, unfortunately, Charlie Christian uh, passed away too soon. And, and he was not the first one. And the first one that recorded the instrument in 1931, as uh, 38, was George Barnes, and Big Big Bronze was a famous bluesman. But it was Charlie Christian that did. Uh, the, with this single string technique combined with amplification help bring the guitar out of the rhythm section and into the forefront as a solo instrument. So the amplification changed completely the view of the jazz guitar. As when you have seen Nick Lucas or the other, basically it was two instruments, guitar and violin or guitar and vocals, nothing more. As otherwise in a band it disappeared or you need to strum loud and so being a, a rhythmic instrument. What changed everything was the amplification. But on the other side of the ocean, the solution was different. And these guys, the quintet of Gert de France, solved the problem in a different way. This one is a condenser microphone. Condenser microphone is a very sensitive microphone, tube microphone. And that was at that time. We are talking about the middle of the 30s. And the solution was simply putting the instruments in a certain way. The soloist in the middle, the two rhythm guitar on the side, the bass back, the, ba the, bass, the bass lines goes everywhere anyway, the bass frequencies, and the violin side of that. The violin is very loud and, and has uh, frequencies that comes in the microphone anyway, just like the chip or something. Uh, of course, there is no horn. There is no drums. You couldn't. Uh, otherwise, this sort of balance couldn't work anymore. The quintet, uh, uh, it was the most famous European band uh, in jazz. Uh, uh, John Goriner, it is just like a, a seminal figure, a, such an important musician. And Stefan Graffelli, the violin player. Stefan Graffelli, uh, Jaguarano was Belgian born, a, a Romani French jazz guitarist, and everybody knows him. Stefan Graffelli was born Stefano Grappelli, uh, and as Italian, uh, Italian parents, and then he moved to France. And it's, it's interesting to see, uh, knowing more about their history, and I have, I have learned them through, uh, through an, a musician that played with Stephen Graffali uh, in the last period of his life, and it was Martin Taylor. Uh, Martin Taylor is one of my favorite guitar players, and I'm, I'm studying online with him as a magic musician. And he played with, uh, with Stephen Graffelli. And, and uh, uh, just in a word, you know, the music business is, is a word of sharks, you know, as the business in general. Consider how honest they were these guys at that time. Uh, John Reiner couldn't write, not only music. He, was, he couldn't write or read, simply put across. 
And all the, all the things, all the bureaucratic <coughs> things were done by Stephen Graffelli. The, the tunes that, yeah, that were copyrighted by uh, John Gorina was Stephen Graffelli that wrote them down and put in the name of John Gorina. He never stole one note. Let's say it's remarkable. How gen they were real gentlemen, not only great musicians. But these guitars, you see, they were different. The guy that did this guitar was this one, Mario Macaferri. Mario Macaferri uh, uh, was born in Cento, uh, Emilia Romagna, he is a province of Ferrara, not very far from my city, Modena. And he was an inventor, and he had this, this idea I do uh, 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 the top very thin so it can uh, be loud. And to get the, the uh, slightly uh, round, you know, uh, to slightly arched, he used the steam and doing an horizontal bracing. And he, he did two guitars. The petite bouche, that means the small mouth, or, or, or the D hole, or grand bouche, the big mouth. Uh, the second one was more for reckon, the first one for it was a little bit more mellow and a better sound to, to play as a single instrument, as a solo instrument. Then he, he, he started collaborating with Selmer, a French build, uh, instrument maker, and then he sold the, the, the design and everything. And it, now we know as Selmer guitars, but the inventor was Mario Macaferri. And now we listen to these guys, and, and it's a very nice, very nice pick this thing with the presentation and the original voice of the thirties. It's quite funny all, to see how how they were. And straight jazz became a month, thanks to a few musicians whose remarkable improvisations gave jazz a new lease on life. Listen to Django Reinhardt. It's the same melody, but what a difference in interpretation. These three musicians will represent two guitars and a bass fiddle. Finally, here is Stefan Grappelli, virtuos violinist of hot jazz. Thank you. 
just like um, Jungle was the, fam the most famous and one of the greatest soloists, considering that he used only two fingers of the left hand, as the other two were injured in, a, in, burning, in the burning of his caravan. He never slept in a room, he always preferred to stay in a caravan. Uh, uh, but they were prior uh, to the introduction, uh, introduction of, to the playing of John Ryan and Charlie Christian. Harry Wolf uh, was one of the prominent guitar players. You see that he's endorsing a, gr a guitar, the Gretsch guitar, uh, just like uh, the, the um, guitar brand doesn't uh, endorse anyone if it's not good. And it was very good. Uh, his, his real name was Onofrio Wolf. Uh, in, in the, he was a pioneer of jazz guitar. Uh, and uh, he, he was born in Grotte, Sicily, and became his music career as a clarinet and switched to guitar. And then uh, he went to New York with his dad uh, when he was 14. And he did a great career. You see that in this picture. Uh, is, uh, is with Django Reiner, and they have swapped the guitar. Django is on the top. It was a character, so it would, it could, you couldn't stay higher than Django. Uh, 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 but they have swapped the guitar, uh, so Django is, is playing the Gresh of, of Harry Wolf, and Harry Wolf is playing the Macafer. But anyway, it means that they have a certain consideration, and uh, the, the Django has a consideration and respect. It's Zang who was a character, so I consider, yeah, to consider that. And so, uh, at this point of the jazz history, start, uh, the guitar starts to become, uh, started to become a soloist instrument. So that play, and of course, uh, all uh, a series of uh, guitar players brought this art to a higher level. And some of them, we see here Tal Faro, Bernie Castle, Herb Elvis, and my personal favorite of them, West Montgomery. Uh, West Montgomery, uh, these are all guitar players that use the pick, mostly, and, and play single notes. Uh, West Montgomery used the thumb uh, as a down, down stroke and up stroke. It was a particular technique, uh, and, and uh, the extensive use of octaves. The continuation of his style is probably George Benson has a lot of things in common with, with West Montgomery. Uh, but the question is, uh, we have seen the rhythm guitar. We have talked now about this, the single notes, just like a soloist. But could the guitar be an instrument that stays by itself? So it's a solo instrument that brings the melody, the harmony, the counterpoint, the, uh, you know, the fills and the bass lines all together, sure. Okay. And, and the, the guy that is still a reference of this style was Joe Pass. This one. Joe Pass was Antoni Giacomo Passalacqua. Uh, he was the oldest son Mariano Pasalac was still new work. He encouraged his son to play. It's uh, no one that you become still new worker like me. And he, he did a good thing because he became very good. And uh, he's one of, he was one of the prominent in, in this style. I want to show you what it's, it really means, this thing. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter if you know music or you don't. I, I try to explain in, in the easiest way, just to understand what is what is the huge work behind that. Um, yeah. By the way, in the last uh, Just Time, <coughs> Just Time magazine, uh, there is an article of the great Paco thing about him. And in the article, John Pizzarelli interviewed Pat Martini, and he talks about the guitar, of course. And he says that he composed on the piano. And he says, when you make a, an interesting voicing with the piano, it seems that, is a, that you are a genius. To make the same thing with the guitar, maybe, and sound good, maybe you need 10 years. <laughs> he exaggerates, of course, but just like to say 
that if somebody told you that the guitar is an easy instrument, it's a lie. So don't believe that. It's not an easy instrument. And uh, here we see setting doll, a tune, uh, Duke Ellington tune, the melody, the harmony, uh, just like the Imam Sanji said, the, the chords. It doesn't matter if you understand or not. I'd just like to show you. This is the melody and the chords. I did the uh, 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 fingerstyle arrangement, changing some of the chords, adding uh, passages, and making a different rhythm, and I did something different. I show you this not as I have the idea of that my thing can stand side of these guys, not even in my dreams. I per I'm perfectly aware and conscious of all my limitations. But it's just to show you this tune, Satin Doll, first in my version, that it is what it is. Um, but I am, I am uh, still young, so I, I can improve. And, and then we will see what the same tune in the same key is in the dance of Chopin's. So I show you my version of Satin Doll. Uh, and then I have this one. 
who we said to work for the mother means you want to hurt yourself. Mm. You know, but it's just like a, a, it's a sort of banyad yumita, we say, a bath of humble. You know, you have, you have to always to understand uh, your limits. And when you see this, you understand your limits. I perfectly know my limits. But I have time, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> well, of course, Jopas was not the only one that you play in this way. One, uh, uh, there was our, our Morgan, Ramiskeet. Uh, by the way, I went, I went to, 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 just like to polish and to, to refine these things. In 1991, I went to the Guitar Institute of Technology in LA. And starting with Ramiskeet, and the other two were Steve Trovato, an Italian American, very, very good uh, finger picking player, and, and Jody Orr. Uh, so, two were Eastern Americans. And, 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 um, and that style, uh, the Cornelius style, one of the best was Bucky Pizzarelli. He put this pic, uh, having him smiling. Uh, everybody knew him, told that he was such a, a, a kind guy. He passed away last year for COVID 19. He was 95 or 96. Wow. Uh, he's uh, uh, two sons and a daughter. One of the songs is John Pizzarelli. We will listen to him. The other is a bass player, and the, the daughter is a classical guitar teacher. So all the family has been positively infected by music. And, uh, you see here is the Benedetto Bacchi Pizzarelli. Is a uh, Benedetto that Luther we talked before has done this uh, seven strings. Uh, to have one string more allowed you to have a, a, a wider harmonic spectrum, as you have a B, usually is B on the bass, as the guitar is tuning fifth, so you have another another uh, lower note. And it's perfect when you do chord melody style, the guitar is a solo instrument, you use a lot of bass notes. Uh, we will listen uh, to, to Bach Pizzarelli with Fred Vignola, another uh, old guitar player of Italian origins in Mongolia. Uh, at the time, uh, at the time of this recording, was already 80, 87 or 80, 88. Uh, here's Mongolia. Oh. Thank you. 
John Pizzarelli, the son. And a son of string guitar as well. And you will notice that John Pizzarelli is also a good singer. And you will see how he swap from uh, playing with the right hand fingers and then he pick up the, the pick. Seems to talk, but pick up the pick. And, and, and he starts doing a soloing, dubbing with the voice. When you dub with the voice, you, you get a wider harmony, so it, it can stand by itself. Okay, jump is around. I go with it. I'm John Pizzarelli, and here's I Got Rhythm. I got rhythm, I got music, I got my God, look at us for anything more. I got daisies in green pastures, I got my God, look at us for anything more. Hope in trouble, I don't mind him, you won't find him at my door. I got starlight, I got sweet dreams. stage with Pin Daniela. So if it's just like a giant like Pat Matheny uh, do that uh, means that it's a sort of and uh, you know endorsing that that uh, that Pino was great. And he was great. Here is particularly a special person for me, Giuseppe La Monica was my teacher, was my was my maestro. And I think that he deserved to stay there. He was an, an amazing teacher with a big, big, big culture of uh, music. Yeah, he was like starting to laugh, that's why I did this bit. And I, I studied with him five years in guitar and harmony and then orchestration. Then I had the pleasure of working at his side in the 90s and until my departure for, in, from Italy in 2009. <coughs> he passed away a few years ago and uh, I miss him. Here, Pasquale Grasso. Pasquale Grasso is the new generation. He's an absolute stunning player. His technique is something unbelievable. And uh, he studied classical guitar and then, <coughs> of course, he moved to New York, where he lives. And we see 
in a solo performance now, and, and uh, um, uh, about uh, just like doing a, a, an improvisation over a Thelonious Monk tune. Pasquale Garas.
to finish where everything started. This is, uh, this is, uh, I don't want to tell you the story, I would discover this, but it was quite funny. I discovered a couple of years ago. Uh, this is Radio Times, the official organ of the BBC. Uh, you can't read the, the day, but here is 14 of August, 1924. In the program of the radio, was scheduled a weekly concert of this guy, Dante Sini, from Modena. This is the, from my own town. This guy here, the band leader, migrated to UK in the early 20s, so when I, exactly 100 years ago. And with a local musician, he did a semi grand hotel shuffle band, a resident artist band in the Grand Hotel Shuffle that performed jazz. I one well, of the first jazz bands in UK. You see no guitars, oh, there, just, uh, there is a guitar there, but probably they put just for the picture, I don't know. But there are the banjos there. And, and just like to close the circle. Uh, I show you tonight the, the, this quick view of history, seen from the point of view of the guitar. I'm on the perspective of the Italians, but all the people in the world, in a certain way, contributed to jazz. Think about Brazil, Chupin, Astro Piazzolla, <coughs> Argentina, oh, you can say everything. Here in Perth, I find some, and two of them are here, of the best guitar player I ever met in my life. I am serious. And believe me, I have met a lot of great players. <coughs> Uh, and, and I'm honored to be part of the Jazz Guitar Society WA. Tonight we have the president and a member of the committee, two amazing music players and beautiful people. So I want to say jazz can come up everywhere. Uh, can, jazz has no boundaries. Jazz helps to build bridges between the peoples, not wars. Uh, jazz belongs to the people that do it, to the people that play it perform it, or simply listen to it. I love it. It's all about that. Thank you.